the flu shot can give you the flu. Fact or fiction? Come on over. Don't be on an island. Nah, 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 nah. It's time for another fact or fiction, and today we're talking about vaccines. Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Michelle Yasharpour. I am an allergist and immunologist. I have been in practice for about eight years. So the rules are, I'm going to be reading off a series of statements. If you think it's a fact, you're gonna go over to my right side, the blue side. If you think it's fiction, the left side, the pink side. I think that there are so many different social media outlets that discuss vaccines and unfortunately a lot of misinformation. Vaccines are one of the things that have kept us from seeing some really devastating diseases. In the last couple years, we're you know seeing a lot more measles, we're seeing a lot more of these diseases that we haven't seen in over a decade. To create this communication dialogue about vaccinations is really, really important because so many people hold such hard opinions on it. I always have a government conspiracy type of attitude to vaccinations, but my knowledge uh, is actually very limited, so. I think this is gonna be a fun challenge. All right, is everyone ready? Yeah. Yes. Statement number one. Vaccines are the oldest known medical treatment. Fact or fiction? So why do you think it's a fact? I never thought about what's the oldest medical <laughs> tradition. So I don't know if, they, if vaccines wouldn't be. Anybody wanna say why they thought it was fiction? Well, they used to use leeches. So okay. that's, that's pretty old. And a hot rag. Yeah, yeah. Just feel better. This is a fact. <laughs> so I think, you know, cold rags and water, they're not technically a medical treatment. Vaccines are actually even older than antibiotics and anesthesia. What we've seen in the seventh century, monks in India were using snake venom and drinking it to protect themselves against being bitten by snakes. People in China inhaling small parts particles in order to prevent themselves from getting smallpox. See, I almost walked across too because I wanted to be a follower, but you got to stand in your convictions. <laughs> the next statement, once you're vaccinated against a disease, you're protected for life. Fact or fiction? I've never gone to get any other vaccines like since I was a child, so I figured... Because you got it that you're protected for life. Right. This is actually fiction. Ah. They lose their effectiveness after a certain number of years. It was one of those things where, yeah, that makes sense. Vaccines work once and you're good for life. But your body does grow, your body does change, different things affect you. The viruses are smart, they change. A lot of time when the vaccines are being developed, they go to market without understanding the full durability. And over time we realize that, you know, it has worn off and that we need to do a booster. So our next statement, Vaccines have only eradicated one disease in humans. Fact, fiction. Eradicated means we haven't seen one case of it in the entire world. Polio, right? Isn't polio. that the only one? Polio. Definitely more than polio. Polio, smallpox. It's actually a fact. Polio is not the disease that's been eradicated. There's a big difference between eradicated and eliminated. So eliminated means that a vaccine has basically removed something from a certain region, and the only disease that's been eradicated is actually the smallpox. Well, I was thinking polio. I stood on the right side, but technically I got it wrong, so. For a long time, we didn't see measles, mumps, rubella, polio, but we for sure can't say that they've been eradicated because there was just five new measles cases in LA in the last month. Next statement. Vaccine for the chickenpox also vaccinates for shingles. Fact, fiction. I'm gonna say, uh, I want you to explain to me what shingles are. <laughs> Why do you guys think that that's not true? Because I had chickenpox and then later in life I got shingles. And that's embarrassing to tell everybody, but I know that it's not true. It's actually fiction. And part of it is because of what you said. The vaccine for chicken pox does not protect you against shingles completely. There's actually two different types of vaccine for shingles that you can get to protect against the shingles itself. Shingles is, and you were like, I don't know what shingles is. Shingles is that virus that sits and sleeps and hangs out in your nerves 
And in certain occasions, for example, if you're super stressed out, haven't slept, you know, you're just run down, it can get reactivated. It can reduce the risk of it because if you have that live attenuated virus, it's gonna be a smaller chance of getting shingles. Next statement, the flu shot can give you the flu. Come on over, don't be on the island. No, 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 no. I'm holding, I'm holding. So to our, our Lone Ranger here, do you wanna tell us why you think it's not true? I feel like whenever you get the flu shot, they say you could get flu-like symptoms mildly, but you don't get the flu from it. Oh, okay. Because that's the whole point of a vaccine. You don't get the actual thing, right? I feel like I got really sick after a flu shot once, and I blamed it on the flu shot. I don't know if that was the actual case. So, actually, this is fiction. So if I had a dollar for every time somebody said that I'm not getting my flu shot this year because every time I get my flu shot I get sick, I'd be very rich. I remember them saying, you know, you might feel a little bit uncomfortable, you might have flu-like symptoms, but you're not going to really get the flu. And if you get it, it's because you already were susceptible. Getting any sort of vaccine is going to stimulate your immune system. So anytime your immune system is simulated, you're gonna get all of these different weird side effects. You're gonna feel a little run down. You might have a low grade temperature. It's just your immune system working to fight against that vaccine so that it can build immunity against the actual flu. Scientists in a lab will sit and try and predict what the flu is gonna look like that year. And then they basically formulate the different proteins that they think is gonna be in the flu virus. So every year there's a new flu shot to try and protect against that year's flu. So you can't get the flu from proteins. All right, so the next statement, vaccines can help prevent cancer. Fact, fiction. Why not? Cancer can come at you in so many different forms, like yeah. smoking or, right. you know, you can eat healthy exactly. and still get, develop breast cancer, lump out of nowhere. There's no vaccines for that. I think that's pitching. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you switch over? Because he liked what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why do you think that that's true? Because HPV, you can get cancer and you can get a vaccine for that. So in order yeah. for that Ooh. to be true, I thought you just needed one example. We're speaking to this. So basically, it's a fact. And it's because... There are vaccines, so in particular, <laughs> HPV is a very great, uh, it's a great example. We vaccinate, you know, young, like adolescents before they become sexually active to prevent them from getting the HPV strain that can cause cancer. And another example is actually hepatitis B. So with the hepatitis B vaccine, we know that chronic infection and chronic liver disease predisposes somebody to getting cancer. And so if you can prevent hepatitis B, you can actually prevent liver cancer as well. The next statement, yeah. vaccine-induced immunity is more effective than actually contracting the disease. Fact or fiction? And I just feel like if there is a vaccine for it, like why why wouldn't you just do that rather than like living through the, the disease itself? <laughs> like I would rather not suffer, so. So this is a technicality question. Just because something is more effective doesn't mean necessarily that it's better. It might sound great to be able to get the natural disease and then be protected for the rest of your life. You're putting other people at risk. And so that's why preventing the disease itself with a vaccine is better. Preventing a disease and not having to live through it and risking dying from it, we think that that's better. And when you have everybody vaccinated is that you actually get to protect not just you and not just your family, but the concept of herd immunity. When you get a bunch of kids sick, and they're walking around and you're taking them to, you know, whatever market you're going, there are a lot of people there that can't get vaccinated, either because they have an immunodeficiency. Last question. Studies have shown that vaccines can cause autism. If you think they cause autism, stay here. If you don't think that they cause autism, stay here. So tell me why you guys think that that's true. I have heard a lot of it being really high mercury and so really bad for young, young children. Well, there have been studies that I've even seen online. I believe it was one study by a guy who lost his medical license. I don't think you can get autism post-birth. I do feel like vaccines kind of have just become like a scapegoat. Like it's very easy to just be like, oh, it's the vaccines. If your child was already going to have autism, you would still blame it on the vaccination. Mm. It seems like false correlation to me. So, fiction. Ah
when studies are published, we believe them because they're supposed to be evidence-based. All of this started in 1997 when Andrew Wakefield published an article claiming that this was true. He actually lost his license and the article was retracted um, because it was shown that a lot of the data was falsified. I used to be a behavioral therapist. I worked with a lot of kids on the spectrum. I worked with a lot of kids um, who have autism. So I definitely did a lot of research. If this is kind of like the one article a lot of people are saying is, oh, this is truth, we're basing everything on this, a bunch of other articles span off that to create this other like wave of thinking, like that's not good, because he wasn't legit. The problem is once that notion is out there, it's really hard to change people's ideas. And just like you said, you know, the time that we vaccinate is also the age where we start noticing little signs that can indicate that a child might have autism. Anytime things happen around the same time, it's very easy to try and, and put the blame on something because it's, it's not easy to digest that sort of diagnosis, and it's much easier to blame something like a vaccine. We actually have had studies recently that have showed that autism developed in utero. So they've done specific studies looking at thimerosal and looking at the mercury levels in kids that have autism and kids that don't have autism. And the levels were the same in both. And so they can't say that the mercury is more likely to cause autism or not. Thank you all for being here. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any medication that you take, any vaccine you take, of course there's gonna be a risk of a side effect or there's gonna be a risk of a uh, you know, local reaction. Taking that small risk is worth it because you're protecting yourself against something much worse. Thank you for watching Refinery29. To watch more videos, click here. And to subscribe, click here.